All right, friends, it's time for another monthly homeschool update. This is going to be a chatty video. We are just going to hang out and I'm gonna share with you what went on in our homeschool in July. So you know what to do, grab that cup of coffee or tea, put in those earbuds if you need someone to keep you company as you get some chores done or laundry folded and let's go. Okay, you probably know me, but if you don't, if you are new here, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Sarah and I'm a homeschool mom to four kids. This month, my oldest son will be a teenager. My twin daughters are turning 11 and I have a five and a half year old son who will be in kindergarten this year. I've homeschooled since my oldest was in kindergarten and each year I learn something new. It is rarely boring around here and I'm just more and more thankful for the option uh, to homeschool our kids. And I love sharing the things that I've learned and that I'm learning with you guys um, through my blog and through this YouTube channel and just connecting with other homeschooling moms here. So I just got back from church camp two days ago. My three older kids and I went. This was a camp for the fifth and sixth grade ministry at our church. Um, I work with this group during the week and went to help out and help lead the girls on this trip along with a couple of other ladies. I often say that I am not a camper. I used to love camping when I was younger and it's not that I don't like it now. I think I just really don't like being away from home and away from my normal routines. I'm a creature of habit. Um, my oldest three kids are part of this group. so. They came with us, which was great, but I definitely miss my husband, Josh, and my little guy back home. And I am such an introvert. So another part of camp is that uh, you really don't have much time to just be by yourself and recharge. So I came home just exhausted. Um, overall, we had a great time. There was obviously um, a lot of Bible study time and worship and learning with it being a church camp, but the kids also got to do a little float trip, climb a rock wall, do archery, zip lining, a water slide, and just hang out with their friends. This is, this is the second year that we've gone. Uh, actually, last year, I uh, wasn't even gonna tell my kids about the camp because I didn't think that they would want to go and I wasn't sure that I even wanted to go, but then they came to me super excited about it when they heard about it from their pastor and I just couldn't say no. And they've had such a blast each year. So I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity and it's a good reminder for me to keep trying things out of my comfort zone because honestly, my kids got to experience a lot of wonderful things on this trip and I can see God working in their lives and the lives of the other kids that got to come with us. And I'm really grateful for that. Another big thing that took up some time for us this month was something called Safety Town. This was something for my kindergartner to participate in. Um, Safety Town is a program that the community we live in puts on at a local elementary school over the summer. It's run by the police officers and it's such a cool program. I actually did Safety Town when I was my son's age at the same school. It's actually held at my, my old elementary school and my other kids have got to do it as well. It is a two week program and the kids go for two hours each morning. And every day there's something new that they focus on and learn that relates to safety. So for example, they spend a day or two on playground safety. Actually, the second day of this, they plant a fake firearm on the playground to see how the kids react to finding it. Um, so do they tell an adult or do something like pick it up and play with it? Um, so that's interesting. Um, and then they teach them about that situation. One of the days is a stranger day where they're teaching the kids about strangers. And for this one, a volunteer woman 
carried a, uh, a leash and a picture of a dog and approached the kids on the playground to see which ones uh, she could get to come with her and help her look for her dog, uh, even though she was a stranger. And this one got my son. He couldn't resist the thought of a lost dog and it was eye-opening. We had to have a talk about this. The woman who was helping with this, she was telling us afterwards she felt really guilty about having to even be put in that position even though she knew it was fake. But again, it was it's a good thing that they did it and it, it um, showed me that we needed to have more conversation in this area with my son. Um, all of my other kids passed this with flying colors, but not my youngest apparently. Um, he did great with the gun thing, <laughs> but not this. Um, what else? They brought in a canine unit one day and the kids got to see what the dogs could do. They had an ambulance tour. They actually got one of the kids um, on the stretcher and hooked up to a few things to basically just show the kids that it wasn't scary and that it was all to help them if they ever needed it. Um, they got to go to a fire station and did a tour and got to play in the water. Um, they learned how to cross the street safely. They practiced that a lot and they got to work a lot on learning their phone number and their address. So just a great program overall. Um, oh, and they have this little town set up in the gym in the school, complete with little houses and street signs and little bikes and power wheels that the kids actually practice driving around on and paying attention to the street signs and things like that. So he had a, a ton of fun. My son had a lot of fun. And um, it was really neat to see so many uh, parts of the community came together to pull it off and that was just great. All right, so let's talk about things more homeschool related. This past month was our first month of the school year that we could begin tracking homeschool hours for our state homeschool requirements. The past couple of years, I have used homeschool hall for tracking our hours. And alongside of that, I was using homeschool planet. Um, but this year I decided to try tracking hours using just homeschool planet. To be honest, I didn't think I would like it because I love Homeschool Hall and how user friendly it is, but so far Homeschool Planet has been pretty easy, mainly because I already use it for all of the rest of our homeschool planning. Um, I think if I didn't need to use an online planner, I would continue to use Homeschool Hall, but it got to be a little bit overwhelming to go between both of them last year. So. Anyway, tracking hours in Homeschool Planet is new to me, but what I like about it so far is that when I set up my schedule in there, I can set it to automatically record a certain amount of time for each class or activity, and then I don't even have to think about it. The only thing I have to do is remember to go in and change it if we do more than what I have preset. So like right now, I have most classes set to log 30 minutes of time. But if we end up spending an hour or something um, on, a, on a subject, I need to go in and remember to update that. And if we do anything extra, like reading or something not originally on my homeschool planner, like today my daughter has spent a couple hours doing art lessons um, online. So I have to go in and add that as a separate thing so that it records the hours. So not terrible overall. Um, but homeschool hall, which I used before, you know, that could also be set up to be automatic and that was a little bit easier to use on my phone, but I think doing everything in homeschool planet is going to, uh, save me just a little bit of time. I'm actually thinking of using homeschool planet to make a little daily checklist for me. Do any of you guys do this? Um, I love having a checklist and I'm talking specifically doing this for cleaning the house. Um, my kids have their chore charts and I, maybe I'm alone in this, but I find that if I don't have a checklist, it's really hard for me to do sometimes what I know needs to be done. Like I've been putting off dusting some rooms upstairs forever, but you know, if I have a box to check, it's most likely going to get done. I don't know, there's just always so much more I can think of that I want to be doing other than cleaning, but the zone cleaning works really well for my kids. 
And although they do a lot of little things, there are some tasks that I really need to be doing around the house more consistently and get in a better habit about. So I'm thinking about creating a little recurring schedule for me and just putting it into Homeschool Planet so I'm held a little bit more accountable each day. I don't know if it will actually work, but it sounds like a good idea. And I know that Homeschool Planet is so flexible and you can use it for homeschool, work, life, all the things. So we'll see. Anyway, got a little bit off track there. Back to homeschool hours. Um, my kids got anywhere. I was just looking at it. They got anywhere from about 60 to 75 hours in during July. And that wasn't even our full loaded schedule. We in the state of Missouri, we have to get a thousand hours in over the course of the year. 600 of those hours need to be core classes and 400 of those hours need to be at the main homeschool location or the home location. Not hard or confusing at all, right? Um, I'm really happy though that really these requirements are pretty easy to meet and we don't have much other reporting or anything we need to do. So it could be worse. But in July, we were already doing CTC math and Latin. We did those over the summer and my son was still doing Science Shepherd and we added in literature and writing. My oldest son, seventh grade, uh, is starting Essentials in Writing and Essentials in Literature this year. And my daughters, sixth graders, are using Essentials in Writing. And I decided to go with BJU Press Literature for them because there's no Essentials in Literature for sixth graders. That starts in seventh grade. So these curriculums are all completely new to us, although we have used BJU Press and I love it. But last year, we needed something different for language arts. I had tried learning language arts through literature and was really hopeful. Do you guys hear that? <laughs> if you can hear that, it's starting to get really loud for me. We have some solar panels being installed today and there's just a little bit of buzzing going on. So sorry about that if you can hear buzzing in the background. But anyways, where was I? Um, learning language arts through literature. Um, I was hopeful, but it ended up not really being the best fit for us. Um, you guys, there are so many great programs out there. I've heard of so many good ones. I decided to go with Essentials in Writing because to be honest, and I think this is all of my kids, but mainly my son, um, they just needed something to hold their hands a bit more in the writing instruction a simple approach, but something that really breaks down the writing process into easy to manage chunks, step-by-step -step pieces, and just helps them become better writers. Prior to using learning language arts through literature, we used BJU Press for about three years, and I wasn't seeing a ton of growth in the quality of their writing. And for the record, I do love BJU Press, you guys know that. And just because it wasn't working for us does not mean it's a bad program or it doesn't work or anything like that. I hope that's obvious, but I still wanted to say it. But anyway, we needed something different. And one of the reasons I started these curriculums in July, aside from racking up a few hours, is because it takes time to get used to new things. And so what I did was we spent two weeks in July where I sat with my kids as we learned how this curriculum worked and the process that they would be going through each day because I needed to, to learn this too. Um, and then the third week, they were kind of on their own. And what I mean by that is that there are video components to most of these lessons. So they would have to be able to first figure out what the lesson or work they needed to do that day, which I have scheduled out in Homeschool Planet. And then they needed to log into the website, get their work done, and then check in with me. So of course I'm right there if and when they need help, but the goal eventually is that with these particular courses, they're going to do them independently. Um, there are some classes and things we do together and then some that are independent. I truly wish we could do all the things together, but unfortunately there just isn't enough time in the day with all the extra things that we do. And especially this year with my younger one starting kindergarten. Um, if you guys watched my BJU Press Literature 6 flip through video, I probably mentioned in there that I was undecided if I was going to teach that course 
to my girls or if I'd have them do the online video lessons. This curriculum is so good and I really do wish I had time to do it with them every day, um, but I, I just won't. So I decided to go with the online video lessons for that one. All that to say, we spent three weeks kind of acclimating to these new programs and so far they're going well. Um, I'm, I'll give you guys updates as we go, but I'm really loving the short lessons in essentials in writing and literature and there's not even a video every day, so I like that too. So far, so good. Um, the only thing I love more about BJU Press is their biblical worldview integration, right? Essentials and literature doesn't have that. But with BJU Press, for example, in the assignments, um, kids will answer questions or discuss what they've read, and then they'll read scripture and answer questions based on that scripture and how it relates to the reading. A lot of times there, um, these questions are, are moral or ethical issues relating to the story. So that's really good. And those are good conversations to have with your kids. Um, with Essentials and Literature, we haven't gotten that far into it yet, but that's not necessarily the backbone of the program as it is with BJU Press. So with it being more of an independent course, I would have to be more intentional about biblical worldview integration in the discussions that I have with my son. Um, you know, thinking about how the literature he reads and the questions that are in that course might touch on biblical truths or maybe even um, how a particular author's worldview affects how they write or how our worldview should affect how we respond to what we read. Uh, I love that about BJE Press. That type of thing is naturally built into the curriculum. But um, just for contrast, in Essentials in Literature, they might have a page where students analyze the motives of a character, um, what's motivating the character to do something and finding evidence from the story to back this up, but it's not necessarily going to have the kids analyze those motives in light of what God's word says. And I think that's something uh, to be aware of and for me to make sure that we're having those types of discussions still this year. Um, you know, it's not necessary, but it's it's a, a great thing to have. And I think it's really important to be building up that biblical worldview and having that strong foundation. So we'll see how it goes and how we end up liking it. Next week, uh, it actually might be the current week, <laughs> depending on when I get this video out, we might be living this right now, but we're going to be doing our full schedule. So that means we're gonna be adding in my father's world for history and Bible, uh, my son's kindergarten lessons, and science for my girls. We will be adding in spelling once a week. One of my daughters is going to do art lessons twice a week. Uh, we'll also start our morning basket routine and I'm really curious to see how the morning basket is going to go and if it's something I can stick with. I really want all of us to have time together in the morning and I've got this grand plan in my mind of how this is going to go but Truth be told, I'm a little nervous about the actual implementation of all the things. So we'll see. Um, last week I went through and finished planning out what I needed to in Homeschool Planet. I had the general bones in there, but I added some lesson plans and got a little bit more specific with a few things. Um, I have a few videos out on Homeschool Planet already, but let me know if there's anything you're curious about with it, such as, what it looks like now or questions about how I use it and I would be happy to show you. This weekend I'm going to be planning for our um, our official first day um, going over, it sounds so weird to say first day because we've been doing school all summer but you know the big first day when we're doing everything. Um, so this weekend I'll be going over a couple of teacher manuals and making sure I have all the supplies I need, things like that. Um, it's going to be an interesting first day. If you watched my video on first day of school, you kind of know what our first day traditions typically are. Well, I found out that my son's soccer practice is going to be on Monday nights, kind of early evening. So Monday is going to be kind of a crazy day for us. He also has martial arts um, right after lunch. So 
Honestly, I'm not sure what we're going to actually be able to fit in. Um, you know, you make the plans and then you kind of adjust them as you go. That's just how it works. Um, but we'll do what we can. I'm going to try to film and share our first day with you guys as well. I think it's going to be a little chaotic, but that's life, right? And speaking of life, haven't things just been super crazy lately? I tell you what, that's one of the hardest things about doing this type of thing, making these videos, um, blogging, sending out my newsletter. Um, it's that the world feels like it's going nuts right now. And it feels so strange to just continue on like everything is normal right now when we all know that it's not. Um, but I keep reminding myself that God is in control. He is not surprised by anything that's going on around us right now. And you know, you just have to do what you can do. Take things day by day and keep that solid faith and focus that things are not spinning out of control. They're spinning right into place. So I hope you guys are all doing okay, staying grounded and prayerful and keeping that faith as you head into this new homeschool year. This next month, August, um, I've got some videos planned. One is a collaboration with some other YouTube moms on favorite homeschool curriculum. And I will be releasing weeks 33 through 35 of the homeschool prayer challenge. So if you're not signed up for that, look for those videos and check those out. Um, I like to do a, like a do a lesson with us type video each month during the year. So let me know if there's something in particular you would like to see. And I think Josh and I are up for another homeschool dad chat video. We've only done one of them and I thought it'd be fun to do another one. So I'd love to hear your opinions on that. Would you watch it? What are some things my husband and I should chat about or discuss as homeschool parents? Um, let me know in the comments. I have a new giveaway up this month on my blog. I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can check it out to see what exactly I'm giving away. I think it's a pretty amazing prize, so you might wanna check that out and get in on it. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing and following along with our family in this homeschool year. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this update and I will see you next time.